let's explore how exactly we solve Lambert's problem using universal variables and f and g functions. We start with our definition of the f function given by these two expressions, and we can solve these for chi-squared as follows. We are now going to take this result, chi squared is equal to R2 R1 over LC2 times the quantity one minus cosine of delta nu, and we're going to substitute it back into the F dot equations as shown here. So that will give us That is the square root of mu over R2 R1 times the quantity R2 R1 over LC2 times one minus cosine of delta nu, this whole term square rooted times psi C3 minus one is equal to the square root of mu over L times the quantity one minus cosine delta nu over L minus the reciprocal of R2 minus the reciprocal of R1 all times the tangent of half of delta nu. We can instantly cancel the square root of mu here and the square root of L here. Then we're going to multiply this whole expression by the product R2, R1 in order to cancel this denominator. And that will leave us. So we've multiplied everything by R2, R1, which cancels this denominator on this side and gives us a new product on this side. And we've also brought this tangent of half of delta nu term down into the denominator uh, of the square root and therefore it's now tangent squared down here. To clean this up a little bit, we note that that is the half angle tangent, tangent of delta nu over two is the equivalent to one minus cosine of delta nu over sine of delta nu, a substitution we've previously used. And so we can replace this term, one minus cosine delta nu, tan squared delta nu over two with sine squared delta nu over one minus cosine delta nu. So that means that we can rewrite this whole expression as that is R2 R1 times sine squared delta nu over one minus cosine delta nu quantity square rooted times psi C3 minus one over root C2 plus R1 plus R2 is equal to R1 R2 times one minus cosine delta nu over L. To make things a little bit clearer, we're going to define this entire term as A. And we're going to define this right-hand side term as Y. We are now going to take all of this and we're going to plug it back into our expression for chi squared as given here. Doing this produces chi is equal to R1, R2 times one minus cosine delta nu over LC2 quantity square rooted, which is the same as our newly defined Y divided by the C2 square rooted. We now return to our expressions for the G function as given here, delta T minus chi cubed over root mu C3 is equivalent to R2, R1 over root mu L sine delta nu. And we're going to rewrite this in terms of our newly defined A and Y functions given here and here, and that will give us the expression delta t minus chi cubed c3 over the square root of mu is equal to a square root y over the square root of mu. By inspection, we can also see that the g dot function is equivalent to just one minus y divided by r2, again, based on this definition of y. So to summarize, what we have so far is that the f function can be written as one minus y over r1, g can be written as a times the square root of y over mu, and g dot can be written as one minus y over r2, where y and a are defined in terms of r1, r2, and delta nu, which are all part of the problem definition when solving the Lambert problem, and y is also a function of the semi-parameter of the transfer orbit, which represents the only unknown in these two variables. Next, we can use this previously defined relationship between the f and g functions, f g dot minus f dot g is equal to one. And that allows us to write f dot is equal to f g dot minus one over g, 
which in terms of y and a is the same as one minus y over r1 times one minus y over r2 minus one over a times the square root of y over mu. And this can further be rewritten as, so f dot is equal to the square root of the product mu y over a r1 r2 times the quantity y minus r1 minus r2. So now we have the ability to write all four of our f and g functions, f, g, f dot, and g dot, in terms of r1, r2, and delta nu, and mu, which are part of the problem statement, and the same parameter of a proposed transfer orbit. So bringing this back to the very beginning, we can use the fundamental relationships of the f and g functions to solve for v1, which gives us this relationship, and for v2, which gives us this relationship, so in practice, what you do is you assume an initial value for psi for this variable here, which is chi squared over a for transfer orbit semi-major axis a. You solve for delta t, you compare it to the desired delta t of your problem statement, and then you update and iterate until the solved delta t matches the input delta t. A is a constant and never needs updating. This is set by the initial conditions. Y can be written as so the only thing that's changing in Y is the psi value and C3 and C2, which themselves are purely functions of psi. And similarly, chi in all of these expressions can be written as root Y over C2. Working through the math of all the above, delta T can then most easily be calculated as chi cubed C3 plus A root Y over the square root of mu. And so the only thing that needs to be iterated upon is this psi value. That is the only thing changing in all of these expressions. And so you can iterate on this one single variable until your delta t converges to the input delta t value. 